Hello and thank you for watching. Today's topic is technical, shooting video in RAW. We'll talk about RAW in general a little bit and then dive into NRAW, the new RAW format recently introduced by Nikon. It's now available across their latest cameras, not only with internal recording to CF Express Type B on Z9, Z8, and Z63, but also to SD cards on Z52. We'll cover NRAW in detail, compare it to Apple's ProRes RAW, and review other RAW formats just briefly. Then we'll try to reach a conclusion. Should you shoot in RAW? And if so, should you choose NRAW? In an upcoming video, we'll also discuss the best workflow for processing NRAW, from capture to editing, color grading, and exporting. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. Tabuna. So, why shoot RAW video? At its core, RAW is the ultimate video format. It is where you get everything from the sensor right into your editing software. In today's world, we have high efficiency, high quality compressed codecs such as H.265 that make RAW less essential for content creators in particular. But for filmmakers, including documentary filmmakers like ourselves, RAW is a must. What is RAW in video? It's simply capturing the sensor data as it is, uncompressed, saved into a file for post-production work by people like you or me. That's the essence of RAW. And we still see that in ARRI RAW, for example, the codec used in ARRI Alexa cameras. This is a true RAW. No sharpening, no noise reduction, no color grading, no white balance, no exposure correction, and most importantly, no compression. That's basically why RAW files are always huge. But today we have new standards for RAW. And I've heard YouTubers in particular and even filmmakers complain a little bit about that. No, it is not real raw anymore. It is compressed, it is etc. Well, there is a change in the standards of raw. And this change is driven by two important factors. Number one, the variety of cameras we now have, most of which at much more affordable price points than cinema cameras. And number two, the better compression technology that we have today that allows for a reduced file size without compromising quality. This gave rise to various modern RAW formats. Let's outline them. Let's start with ARRI RAW, the uncompressed real RAW, 12 or 16 bit, completely uncompressed. Apple ProRes RAW, what we can consider the market leader today, the most popular as well, it's 12-bit, compressed, but lossless compressed, maintaining full fidelity of the RAW file. Blackmagic RAW, 10 or 12-bit, just for your information, personally, I don't consider 10-bit real RAW, but it is available in 10 or 12, compressed with constant bitrate. Red code RAW on red cameras, now owned by Nikon, 12 or 16-bit, compressed with variable bitrate. And now Nikon has introduced their NRAW, 12-bit, compressed, intra-frame, lossless, preserving dynamic range and color. And thanks to Nikon advanced compression technology, really, <laughs> NRAW produces much smaller file sizes compared to other RAW formats, especially ProRes RAW. One important thing to note, unlike other RAW formats, which were tweaked later so we could have them on memory cards, and RAW is designed by engineering to be recorded directly to memory cards, CF Express Type B, and even SD card in Nikon Z5 II. Before we carry on, let me make two technical disclaimers. Number one, our tests were all conducted using the Nikon Z6 III, which records both NRAW and ProRes RAW internally to the memory card. But it's important to know that ProRes RAW is also supported by other cameras from other brands. The codec itself is the same across platforms, so the results should be similar. But our results are based on Z6 III, recording both NRAW and ProRes RAW. Number two, all our tests use NRAW recorded to CF Express Type B on Nikon Z6 III. We did not test, not yet, NRAW recorded on SD card on the Z5 II. That will be the focus of a separate video, so subscribe to the channel if you would like to see that. Let's dive in. NRAW versus ProRes RAW. Number one, resolution and frame rate flexibility. We're talking on Nikon cameras, and remember, ProRes RAW is also recorded on other platforms, but on the Z9 and the Z8, NRAW allows 8K at 60 frames per second full frame on CF Express 
Type B. On the SX3, up to 6K, 60 frames per second, full frame on the F-Express Type B. On the 5.2, as we noted before, and this is something we haven't tested yet, up to 4K, 30 frames per second, full frame on SD card, V60 or VNIT. By contrast, ProRes RAW supports up to 4K 60 frames per second on Z9 and Z8, up to 6K 30 and 4K 60 on the Z6 III. Number two, NLE support or editing software support. Unfortunately, and unlike H.264 and H.265 codecs, RAW support varies by software. And this is of course related to the unhealthy competition between the companies, unfortunately. There are two levels of support that we are talking about here. Level one, can the program open, import, and export the raw file? And level two, does it allow full raw controls in terms of ISO white balance, etc.? Let's start with NRAW. It is fully supported in DaVinci Resolve, including exposure, white balance, and all other raw features, except ISO control, for some reason. I hope this comes in a software update soon. In Adobe Premiere Pro, it is supported by a plugin today, not natively, but I assure you, according to uh, reliable sources and to the famous article that we all saw on DP Review, the native support for NRAW is coming to Adobe Premiere Pro soon without the need for the plugin. NRAW, unfortunately, is not supported by Final Cut Pro at all. When it comes to ProRes RAW, it is not supported at all by DaVinci Resolve. It is partially supported in Premiere Pro with very limited RAW controls, and it is fully supported only in Final Cut Pro, Apple and Apple. An important note, Nikon's own NX Studio software does not support viewing NRAW or ProRes RAW files. And I hope Nikon will add this support soon because it would help to compare the files next to each other in one software. Number three, file size comparison. We conducted tests during our trip to Georgia using two identical Nikon Z63 cameras with two identical lenses, the 2470S on both cameras. The same card, the same settings, and we recorded with analog enabled on both cameras. In our first test, it was a control shot. Both cameras were recording NRAW. Files were roughly 7.85 gigabytes, a very, very small variation between the two, mainly caused by <laughs> our fingers pressing the uh, record button in, in like a split second difference. But all conditions were the same and we got the same file size so we can consider our experiment scientifically fair. In our second round, one camera was recording NRAW, the other was recording ProRes RAW. The same settings and the same view for both cameras. We got the following file sizes. In NRAW, 10.45 gigabytes. In ProRes RAW, 19.53 gigabytes. In the third round, and also for the sake of scientific fairness, we reversed the role. So the camera that was recording NRAW is now recording ProRes RAW and vice versa. We also recorded a longer clip to make sure that we cover all the variations. The ProRes RAW file was 28.64 gigabytes. The NRAW file was 15.63 gigabytes. So in both tests, the NRAW file was about half the size of the ProRes RAW file, a little bit more than half the size of the ProRes RAW file. This is showing higher efficiency in compression on Nikon's part in the NRAW file. But does this affect the quality of the file? We went back to the studio and we did our test there, and here are the results. In our banding test, there was no visible banding when grading either codec under normal conditions. Both files performed really well, and no visible banding was seen in either one of the files. In the sharpening test, after applying similar sharpness in post, and remember we're dealing in two different NLEs, so it was not very easy to apply the, the same amount of sharpness, but we can tell after doing this and after fine tuning that we got the, roughly the same sharpness from both files after sharpening. In our noise test, before denoising, both files showed nearly identical noise levels. That's checking by eye. Remember, we are dealing with two separate NLEs. The ProRes RAW file is in um, uh, Final Cut Pro, and the NRAW file is in DaVinci Resolve. So visually checking, roughly speaking, we have the same level of noise before denoising. However, when we did the denoising, we noticed that the NRAW file is performing slightly better. Now, 
bear in mind that we are in different LLEs. So this could be DaVinci Resolve performing better than Final Cut Pro. It could also be Unreal performing better than ProRes RAW. I cannot make an informed judgment unless I put both in the same LLE and apply the exact same denoising. So for now, I'm holding on on this point. In our color comparison, both clips were shot in analog and degraded from Rec 2020 to Rec 709. Results were nearly identical when using Nikon standard LUT. The vector scope is in front of you. The very small variations could be variations in reading the vector scope between the two NLEs, but visually speaking, they are roughly identical when only applying the LUT without any further tweaks. When it comes to white balance, both formats handled correct and incorrect white balance very well and adjustments were smooth and we resulted in what we consider accurate color. One final note, when it comes to overheating, we shot long and short and raw clips on the Z6 III in various conditions. No overheating at all was noticed, not even a little bit of hotness on the handle. It was absolutely fantastic, absolutely perfect. There was no complaints when it comes to overheating. So, what can we conclude? Number one, Enro is an excellent high-performing codec. We compared it to ProRes RAW, the industry leader, and found it to be comparable with even better file size efficiency. Number two, Nikon's compression tech is impressive. And RAW files are much, much smaller than ProRes files. And this is while maintaining fidelity of the RAW file. This is impressive, Nikon. Well done. Number three, the workflow and the grading are nearly identical between NRAW and the ProRes RAW, with no learning curve needed if you are switching between one format to the other. Number four, if I am shooting Nikon and I need RAW, personally, I'd pick NRAW without any hesitation. You might have a different opinion, but that's what I would do. Number five, if I am choosing a new camera or a new platform even, specifically to shoot RAW, Nikon's NRAW is a major advantage and a major deciding point in this decision. It reduces memory card usage and it works well in DaVinci Resolve, which is my preferred NLE anyway, and soon it will support Premiere Pro as well, so we have better options when it comes to editing. Number six, NRAW is a new codec and it will keep evolving. Nikon is known for its updates and for taking care of the software side of its business, so we can expect NRAW to become even more efficient and more powerful over the coming years. Number seven, we are likely to see more LUTs and editing tools optimized for NRAW and NLOG over time in the coming years and even in the coming months, and they are actually starting to become available in the market. Before wrapping up, I would like to congratulate Nikon. I would like to remind everybody that Nikon was the first to add video to a DSLR with the D90 back in 2008. And today they are clearly investing in video with visible and meaningful results. And Enro is one more step in this path. Thank you for watching. Please support the channel by likes, shares, and subscription, and stay tuned for the next video. And cut.